Okay. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our, our World No Tobacco Day celebration. And I am Dr. Glina Ong Cabrera from the Philippine College of Chess Physicians. And with me is Dr. Ronel Sario. Good morning, Dr. Ronel. Good morning, Dr. Glina. And again, we would like to humbly welcome you to the celebration for May 31, 2023, which is the World No Tobacco Day. And this is being celebrated internationally. And I am humbled to be with me the chairman as well of the Council for Control of Tobacco and Air Pollution of the Philippine College of Just Physicians. Doc Dina, may, maayong aga maayong from Bacolod aga. City. Yes. Sa tanan, sa inyo mga diha, nasa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And uh, I hope you are all healthy and uh, happy and of course safe. And uh, pag-usapan po natin, unsa man ni, ano itong World No Tobacco Day. Ang World No Tobacco Day po, ay, as mentioned, did Dr. Ronald Sario, is celebrated every year. And for this year, our theme is We Need Food, Not Tobacco. And ano po ba ang ibig sabihin nitong theme na ito? It's uh, giving importance to food. Kasi po, um, we rather plant food crops rather than tobacco and we are encouraging government and other institutions to um give priority sa pagtatanim po ng mga makakain po natin which is more essential to our survival di ba Dr. Ronel? Yes exactly Dr. Nina and you mentioned about the essential focus po tayo kung ano po ang essential at importante and tobacco as well as end products of tobacco the smoking and everything that goes behind it hindi po siya essential because it can harm our health. That's why we have to focus more on the more important, di ba? During the pandemic, we learned how to realize, we realized a lot of things and we have valued the things that are very important and essential. And one of them is food, literally, di ba? Pahirapan during the pandemic on how to get the food. And we have learned the value of food over vices. And so, especially, it is our way also of helping the farmers. Kasi, di ba, nagiging issue sa farmers na nagta-plant ng mga tobacco. But actually, they can plant na mas mga mas essential na mga crops tulad ng bigas or kamote or ka whatever, kung ano yung makakain, as mentioned yes. by Dr. Ronel. So, uh, to formally welcome us, uh, we'd like to call on our Philippine College of Chess Physicians President, Dr. Eileen Aniceto to give her welcoming remarks. Good morning. Mara ma um ayong o buntag sa tanan kasi nagbisaya sila so I guess I have to also join in that uh, dialect. So I'd like to welcome everyone to the Health Forum uh, World No Tobacco Day Health Forum. So we all know that smoking has health consequences. Nagkakasakit tayo sa puso, sa baga, sa utak, sa balat, sa bibig, sa ngipin, sa mata. Okay? And alam din nating lahat na nakakamatay. And an estimated 8 million people worldwide die annually from smoking-related diseases. And about 1.2 million for exposure to secondhand smoke. Hindi sila naninigarilyo, but they still die of smoking-related diseases because of exposure to a loved one who was smoking or a co-worker who smoked. So in the Philippines, 112,000 Filipinos die every year from tobacco-related diseases. Okay? And mga 20% of the deaths in the entire Philippines is due to smoking or tobacco use. So it is an epidemic hanggang ngayon. And in, it's just as bad, if, if not worse, than the COVID epidemic or the TB epidemic. So be, malaki siyang public health threat. So worldwide, there's about 1.3 billion smokers. And 80% of the smokers are in the low to uh, middle income countries where the burden of uh, tobacco-related illnesses and death is also heaviest. Out of pocket ang gastos natin sa mga sakit na nakukuha from smoking. So it's not a mean thing. 
So tobacco use contributes to poverty by diverting household spending income kesa binibili ng pagkain, binibili ng sigarilyo. And ito yung pinoint out ni Dr. Cabrera kanina, agricultural land supposed to be uh, growing sustainable crops sana are being diverted to tobacco growing. So hence the theme for uh, this year's uh, World No Tobacco Day celebration, we need food, not tobacco. And so the global campaign, uh, campaign aims to raise awareness about uh, alternative crop production and marketing uh, opportunities for tobacco farmers and to encourage them to grow sustainable, nutritious crops. It will also aim to expose the tobacco industry's efforts to interfere with attempts to substitute tobacco growing with sustainable crops. So, nagko-contribute pa to, to the global food crisis. So, for today's forum, we have a great lineup of luminaries from different organizations, the WHO, the DOH, PMA, PCP, TPS, strong advocates of our fight against tobacco and experts in their respective fields. So thank you to the head of uh, the Council uh, on to control, control of Tobacco and Air Pollution, Dr. Dina and Ronel, for your team. And of course, with the backup of Dr. Albert Rafanan, uh, head of the Committee on Advocacy. So again, welcome everyone and uh, enjoy the rest of the proceedings. Thank you very much, Dr. Aileen Aniceto. Dr. Aniceto is the president, current president of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians. And now let's proceed. Actually, this morning is quite memorable, very remarkable, and as well as memorable for, will be memorable for all of us because this is uh, a show of force of all medical communities in this set in this morning's event. So without further ado, to give us the opening remarks, we have a distinguished personality to represent to us the Department of Health. Let's call in for the opening remarks, Rodley Desmond Daniel M. Carza. He is the OIC Director for of the Health Promotion Bureau of the Department of Health. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Dr. Nell, for the introduction. Um, sa ating mga ka-health Pilipinas na kasama natin ngayong umaga, to our esteemed speakers and partners in health, uh, World No Tobacco Day uh, 2023 awardee, Senator Pia Cayetano, uh, Dr. Erlene Aniceto, Dr. Michael Limpin, Dr. Riz Gonzalez, Dr. Joel Sanchegel, Dr. Aimee Mateo, and Dr. Uh, Minerva Kalimag. Of course, uh, from the DOH, Mr. Armand Arguelles. Uh, to the fo fellows, diplomates, and communities of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians, the Philippine College of Physicians, and the Philippine Medical Association, uh, sa ngalan po ng aming OIC Secretary Maria Rosario Singh Verhere and Assistant Secretary Beverly Lorraine Sinho, isang masaya at manasob na araw po sa ating lahat. Today, we are energized to be among partners in celebrating the World No Tobacco Day. We are one in the vision of a smoke-free and vape-free healthy Filipinas, and our messages put a spotlight on protecting our youth who are at risk of starting smoking and vaping. At the same time, we continue our campaign for smokers and vapers to quit. This year's global theme highlights our needs. We need food, not tobacco. And so we highlight the needs of our youth as well for self-nourishment, for safe spaces and opportunities for self-expression and for available resources and reachable access points for help. These messages stand upon the important reforms for the past decade by the collective effort of the broad coalition of tobacco-controlled advocates. The Global Adult Tobacco Survey 2021 results showed that smoking prevalence in the country declined from 22.7% in 2015 to 18.5% in 2021. And a significant proportion of current smokers who thought about quitting attribute this gra to graphic health warnings. Syntax reforms that almost doubled the price of cigarettes also resulted in the largest fraction of smokers who quit at 68% in 2021 from 55.5% in 2015. These wins are welcome indicators that we are making steps in the right direction. And with that, congratulations po sa ating lahat. And these wins also give us light to the path ahead. 
While the data showed less Filipinos being exposed to secondhand smoke in the places of work, study, and uh, common public spaces, Filipinos remain vulnerable as long as designated smoking areas exist and as long as establishment of leisure and business allow for smoking and vaping to harm the people who frequent these spaces. We at the DOH continue to push for a smoke and vape-free communities in the new normal through our health promotion playbook, engaging local governments to commit and implement policies and programs that enable this vision. And throughout our campaigns, bringing to fore No Smoking Month as part of our larger campaign for substance use prevention and the seven healthy habits para sa health Pilipinas. Smoking being a leading risk factor for cardiovascular disease, cancer, and other NCDs also figures in our consultario campaign. Today's forum also calls attention to the country's vape problem. In 2019, the Global Youth Tobacco Survey showed that about one in seven Filipino teens are already users of e-cigarettes and the recent vape law has only made vapes more accessible to our youth. We are one with our partners here today in calling on our communities to protect our children and youth from the harms of vape. Faced with increasing cases of e-cigarette or vaping uh, product use, association, uh, associated lung injury or evali, and the continuing industry interference positioning these products as less harmful or as effective cessation aids, we say no. We say no to vape, no to tobacco. Hence, we enjoin all our partners in health to remain steadfast in this resolve. We are together in amplifying the truth about the harms of smoking and vaping and listening to communities, especially the youth, and addressing the factors that predisposes them to picking up the habit. And of course, in connecting those who want to quit with our cessation services like the DOH quit line 1558. Again, happy World No Tobacco Day to all of us. Maraming salamat mga kasangga para sa smoke-free, vape-free, healthy Pilipinas. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Dr. Carza. And... Uh, Alain mo yun, uh, Dr. Ronel, dati ang problema natin as uh, tobacco lang. Exactly. Ngayon ang problema natin, vape na. And it's really bothering uh, all the medical uh, societies and uh, institutions kasi because of the increase in the usage of vape, uh, there is already parang a risk to the next generation na iba na rin ang potential na magiging sakit. Ano? Okay nga eh. So, we have been fighting against the use of smoke or tobacco for the past decades, nag evolve din yung mga vices no? that could harm our health. And I was surprised that one out of seven youth are already using vape. So that's how rampant it is. And it has become a bad notion, I think, because of the marketing strategy also of this industry. So that's why medyo naingganyo yung mga kabataan. But at least we are here again today to reiterate as well as to amplify the voices of all different sectors in the health field as well as different societies. That's why we will be represented this morning para to push and to fight back against the increasing fad no, for the use of vape. So at least we are here to educate and help everyone be informed with regards sa bad effects po ng vape as well as ng tobacco. Actually, Diva, we are very excited because according to the Global Adult Tobacco Survey that there has been already a decrease in yes. the usage of uh, smoke uh, from tobacco or the regular cigarettes. But unfortunately, uh, nakakita rin naman natin ang increase naman sa vape. But uh, f- fortunately, we, we have a, a champion uh, from the Senate that has yes. been uh, fighting with us to promote health especially to protect the youth. And um, she will be awarded by the WHO. And to give us more uh, information about that very, very special award, uh, I would like to call the uh, Dr. Uh, Florante Ante from Ante Trinidad uh, from the World Health Organization to introduce to us uh, that special award and, of course, to introduce our awardee, uh, uh, Senator Pia Quetan.
Dr. Renel, while okay, waiting, while, while waiting, waiting po sa ating, siguro, sa ating uh, recording, uh, because uh, P, uh, Senator P has uh, sent uh, her uh, message for us uh, during this special day. And I think she will be going to Geneva also. Yes. Because she was, she was handpicked, ika nga, from the many uh, nominees. And she uh, was uh, the one who was chosen for the award. Yes, and this and, is quite uh, uh, significant for all of us at saka timing siya as we celebrate the World No Tobacco Day. And this is in line also with our campaign that we are doing right now. This is through actually the efforts of all our doctors and with the help of the Philippine College of Chest Physicians. No, sa tulong po ni Dr. Albert Rafanan, who is the chairman for the advocacy, and the steering committee, which is the Council for Control of Tobacco Smoke. I just remember, Dr. Lina, that when we had our resumption of the annual PCCP convention, we just had a sort of a session on talking about the plans for the year. Of, oh, ano of ba yung plans staff? natin? Sige yes. nga, pa-share, Dr. Ronel. And um, very excited about it. Yes, actually, marami po kaming plano under the Council for Control of Tobacco and Air Pollution. And this is just one among the many uh, ideas and plans that we are brewing and cooking for each and every one, especially for the community. So this is just a head start of all our campaign against the use of vape. And the World No Tobacco Celebration is the National Health Forum. And later, we, we, ha we, ha we will have our unified statement signing. So that will be in collaboration with WHO, local WHO, DOH, as well as different societies. So I think mas kilala ni Doc Bina yung mga nandyan ngayon sa... PCCP headquarters. So I think okay na ma. Oh yes, again. Uh -uh. Good morning. Happy World No Tobacco Day to everyone. WHO is pleased to be part of today's health forum with the theme, We Need Food, Not Tobacco, jointly organized by the Department of Health and the Philippine College of Chess Physicians. It is my honor to introduce the 2023 awardee from the Philippines, Honorable Pia Cayetano, for this year's World No Tobacco Day. Senator Pia Cayetano is known for leading and winning some of the toughest public battles in the Philippines against the well-funded and deeply entrenched tobacco lobby. She spearheaded the passage of the sin tax laws of 2012 and 2020 which imposed higher excise taxes on sin products, including cigarettes and vapes, to fund universal health care and other public health programs. In the sin tax law of 2020, Senator Pia succeeded in incorporating strict regulations on vape products, including setting the minimum age of access to vapes at 21 years old, limiting flavors to plain tobacco and menthol to discourage the youth, and designating the Food and Drug Administration to regulate vape products. But all these gains were overturned barely over a year later when pro-industry lawmakers worked to pass the controversial vape law in 2022. Senator Pia was instrumental in passing the country's first graphic health warning law which required the printing of picture-based health warnings on the packaging of tobacco products. This pro-health measure was first sponsored by the Senator in 2008 and was passed six years later in 2014. 
2010. A lawyer, tri-athlete, mother, and health advocate at heart, Senator Pia embodies a Pinay in action and a woman leader for our times. It is indeed my privilege to present the 2023 World No Tobacco Day Award from the World Health Organization to Senator Pia S. Cayetano. This annual award is presented by WHO to individuals and or organizations in public or private sectors with outstanding contribution to the advancement of policy and measures according to WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control and its subsequent guidelines. I take this opportunity to reiterate that WHO will continue to support the Philippines in the fight against tobacco and in our journey towards healthier, safer, fairer future for all the people of the Philippines. Thank you everyone for this wonderful opportunity to be among friends. Um, this award was a surprise to me, but I am very happy to accept it among friends who have made this opportunity for me to fight for a cause that became very dear to me um, over, the, over more than a decade. I, I did not wake up one day and say this is my cause. Uh, I grew up and Alan is a witness to this. Um, our father, if he will say three lines, one of, it, one of them will be no drugs, the second is no smoking, and no alcohol. Those are his three lines. Um, so I did have the pleasure of growing up in a very healthy environment. Our father was a very um, active, uh, uh, he lived a very active and healthy lifestyle, so did my mom, of course. Um, and my brothers and I, despite going through the usual teenage years, were very much guided by those principles that they set. So it was never difficult for me to take up this course because I truly believe uh, through my own happy childhood that this could be a healthy lifestyle that everybody deserves to have. So it's really a lifestyle that, that I want to promote. And, and the reason it's very important to me that our SK representatives from Taguig are here and I hope uh, with the smiles I see on their faces, I will take it as a commitment that we will further this advocacy all throughout the country because um, engaging in both cigarette smoking and the alternatives which are being uh, pushed as healthier alternatives which are both the, the vapes and the heated tobacco these are all addictions, and these are the kind of in addictions that most likely will stay for life and will, will bring a young person into that, that habit of being addicted to a harmful product. And so it's very important that we understand this as early as possible. Um, sadly, uh, although tobacco, I think it is clear to the youth, wala naman youth yata na magsasabing nakakabuti sa kanila yon. Uh, there's a lot of disinformation now and there will be youth that will think and there are adults that think there are members of Congress and policymakers that think or choose to think that it is a healthier alternative and it is not so and we're very happy I always say that if there will ever be evidence to say that there is something that can truly be a a healthier alternative then I will follow the science but until that happens it is incumbent upon us as policy makers that we do not promote this in any way so the journey continues uh, the challenges that face us now are um, to ensure that the policies that we do have are strictly enforced but also I am constantly uh, aware of the need to keep on reviewing these policies because for those of you who have been with me on this journey you know very well and i wish alan was still in the room to hear me say this because most of the times i've repeated this story uh, he wasn't there um the journey that we not started but um the journey from from graphic health warning 
uh, to the syntax, the first syntax law that I handled in 2012, uh, evolved into a new product. Yun nga yung um, mga e-cigs, vapes, and heated tobacco. And the protective measures that we put in when Alan was Speaker of the House and I was the Chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means, this was precisely a response to the debate, do we ban these types of sin products or do we allow it to be sold and put protective measures? And the result was we will not ban, it will be sold, but the protective measures included the three, three of the following. One, uh, the age of access would be 21. Two, the jurisdiction would belong to FDA, so FDA would regulate. And three, uh, the flavors would be limited to original and menthol. And this was really a win for all of us. Unfortunately, barely a year after we passed this law, a bill regulating, well, supposedly regulating the sale of, uh, of um, vapes and e-cigarettes and HTPs uh, was, was um, drafted and eventually passed, removing all those protective measures. So that is the landscape that we are dealing with right now. I will always challenge the new administration to keep in mind the health of our people. And so despite the fact that DTI, for the life of me, that has never had the mandate of ensuring the health of the Filipino, for now, uh, the jurisdiction in everything related to regulating uh, these products are lodged with them, then I am holding them accountable. <laughs> and the most that I can hope for and demand is that they work with the agency that is entrusted to take care of the Filipinos' health, which is the Department of Health and FDA. Uh, I, am in, I, am entrusting, I, am, I am trusting that DTI will work with them uh, until the time comes that we have the political will to reverse this law, which is really a creation of the tobacco lobby. And we will never give up because we have allies all, all over the country, starting with our uh, own DOH, our um, uh, WHO representatives. And I go back now and I will end on this note that uh, the future belongs to our youth and they can only have a future that we carve out now. We cannot pretend to imagine a future for them that we did not prepare for. All of you know the biblical uh, story and um, uh, it is often repeated. Um, you know, if you build on the rocks, if you build on sand, you know very well that's not a strong foundation. So we want to build a strong, healthy foundation for our youth so that when you become parents, when you become grandparents, you will do the same. We cannot ask more of you if we cannot even do um, the bare minimum for you. And so that is what I consider my challenge, which is to continue to drag more out of whatever budget we have to pull out of any resources we're allocating uh, to ensure that the health of our Filipinos is covered. So again, thank you for this recognition and uh, it's an honor to be, to be awarded this. Thank you. Happy World No Tobacco Day! I am one with fellow health advocates in pushing for a smoke and vape-free Philippines. I've always said that my journey as a no-smoking advocate started as a child. My father was very firmly no-smoking. I knew of the ills of cigarettes since I was a child. And I continued with this uh, even later on as a college student because I was an athlete and I, I had teammates who smoke and uh, um, huling huli sila ng coach namin pag nanigarilyo sila kasi parang nanghihina sila, they couldn't even breathe well. And then later on in the Senate, um, I didn't even know that I would have a chance to continue my advocacy through legislation. So it's been a long journey. Around 2008, I first sponsored the picture-based health warning bill. This is the photos of the um, ill effects of cigarettes that you see in every cigarette package. I'm proudly the author and the sponsor of that bill. It took 
2008 to 2014, six years. It took six years uh, for that to become a law, and it's Republic Act number 10643, the picture-based health warning law. And I worked very actively on sin tax, which is the law uh, that taxes sin products, which includes tobacco. Of course, there's a strong lobby by the tobacco companies. They don't want to be taxed that much. And then fast forward, we also are taxing uh, vapes. Um, this is a new legislation also that passed in, at first in 2019, um, where I won a very I won very important provisions that that would have protected the youth from the ills of vapes. And this is access at 21 years. This is limiting the flavor to original and mint. And then third, uh, putting the jurisdiction uh, of vaping products in the FDA. But sadly, because of the lobby. Um, in less than a year, uh, a bill was filed to reverse all of those protective measures, and that is the law that we have today. I've been speaking um, about this as much as I can because it's a travesty. It's a it's a terrible situation that we are in that we we did not even pass. We even reversed the laws that were meant to support the youth to prevent them from the ills of cigarette, and here we are having to battle this one step at a time um, because because these laws were reversed. So now there's access at 18 years of age. There is um, no more jurisdiction of the FDA, it's DTI, and then more flavors are allowed. In fact, in one of the recent resolutions I filed, I showed that vapes are easily accessible in the internet. And um, thankfully, the DTI has responded and they're trying to address this, but this is an ongoing battle. So I need to thank each and every one of you for um, taking on this fight. And if you haven't joined the fight, join it because we want a smoke, meaning a tobacco-free, that includes vape-free Philippines for our youth. So um, panindigan natin and pahalagahan natin yung SDG3, good health and well-being. And this is not just about exercising and eating well, but it's about good habits and um, staying away from bad habits, which includes smoking and vaping. God bless you all and thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And congratulations, Senator Pia Cayetano. And I think this is an eye-opener for all of us since we have heard a lot of the efforts no, that is being done for the past decade na ata. And with the recent fad and popularity of the vape, uh, they have tried to see that on how to control the use of this, especially with the age as well as the jurisdiction, but basically it was just overturned after a year. So that's a bad indication on how really our legislative field or community would think over these things. No, so makikita mo talaga yung priority. But the reason why that we are here, it what we wanted to amplify that voice is to again knock on the doors of those who are our lawmakers to help us out in this advocacy. So without further ado, it's just timely lang po, Dr. Aglina, no, na before we have series of short information regarding the use of vape, no, we will see now and hear the current status of smoking in the Philippines, which is the GATS 2021 results. And this will be presented to us by the Department of Health with the representation of Sir Armand Argelius. Um, Mr. Ar Armand Argelius is our OIC Chief Policy Planning Standards and Research Division, Health Promotion Bureau of the Department of Health. All right, once again, let's yes. have Mr. Armand Argelias. Good morning, sir. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Runel and Dr. Lina, thank you very much for inviting the DOH. Uh, my task for this uh, morning session of the webinar is to present an overview of uh, the status of uh, tobacco use bird in the country and as well as uh, some key directions for us in the public health sector. 
So um, worldwide, tobacco kills over 8 million Filipinos. That's year-round. No? And of these, more than 7 million are direct tobacco users, while uh, the other million is actually are actually non-smokers who are just exposed to secondhand uh, tobacco smoke or to make emissions. No? And uh, the global burden of disease indicates that tobacco is among the leading preventable causes of disease burden in the Philippines. And the NCDs actually account for 68% of all deaths in the country. NCDs actually results in 29% probability of dying prematurely before the age of 70. This is largely caused by the high prevalence of uh, major risk factors, as I said, including uh, tobacco, tobacco use. Now, there is a strong economic grounds as well for addressing uh, this crisis on tobacco use. The estimated cost of NCDs to the Philippine economy would account to around 4.8% of our um, uh, GDP, or that's equivalent to around 756 billion of uh, pesos lost per year because of uh, direct and indirect cost. And we also know, based on the WHO report, that uh, tobacco use also incur an indirect cost of around 680 billion pesos because of reduced productivity of our Filipino workforce. So uh, really, there is uh, a crisis in uh, uh, tobacco tobacco use in the in the country. It is very uh, uh, imperative for us in the DOH and for our partners to uh, really uh, speed up or go full speed mode in terms of uh, implementing our strategies for tobacco control. Now, the prevalence of tobacco use in the Philippines, we base this on uh, our main source of data for our policies and interventions on tobacco control, tobacco prevention and control is uh, the GATS and GYBS. Now, um, since 2009, so we can see uh, there's a significant decrease of tobacco use among adults. Now, so from 29% in 2009, uh, the next situation of GATS is in 2015, we see a reduction to 23.8%. Uh, and now we most recently uh, 19.5% uh, among adults. No? So that's a relative decline of 33% uh, since uh, uh, most, since uh, 15 years ago. So that's uh, a great uh, welcome news for us. No? And we, uh, we credit or we attribute this success to uh, a lot of other interventions in the bulk control, including the syntax, the restrictions that we have. Made. And of course, that's not possible without our champions and partners in, in health. Among the youth, uh, 13 years old, 15 years old students, no, we also uh, can see some relative uh, reduction in prevalence use. But that is not the case when we talk of electronic cigarettes. No? So in vapes, natin, and the tobacco products and novel tobacco products. So, more than double actually yung naging increase in prevalence of electronic cigarette use among both youth and adults. Uh, in the GATS for adults uh, from 0 0.8, uh, it increased to 2.1% uh, among adults. No? And it, this is particularly more alarming for the youth. No? Uh, in 2019, uh, we already recorded around 14.1% of current electronic cigarette users. Pero mas mataas yung figure when you, the indicator that we use is ever used. So from 2015, we have 11.7% of ever use uh, e-cigarette user to 24.6%. So uh, I think this is uh, an indication that, uh, uh, that some of the youth are actually attracted to uh, this to this product, so not to say that uh, more than twenty percent or more than one in five students actually ever tried to use electronic cigarettes. So, yeah. Fourteen percent or one in every students aged thirteen to fifteen years old is already uh, current uh, e-cigarette users. No, and this is alarming because this is an age group that is far less uh, what is allowed by existing laws in 2017, 2018 with the previous uh, vape regulation laws, the 
minimum age of access is 21. No? And with the vape law, unfortunately, it was lowered to 18. So if, uh, if with this age bracket, we can already see some alarming prevalence rate of uh, current and ever use uh, electronic cigarette users among the youth, no? we can uh, imagine na lang yung magiging spike pa niya. Hopefully not, but uh, with the, the lowering uh, further of the age of access, no? this is something uh, that we should be very, very vigilant uh, about. In terms of access to tobacco and vape products, uh, uh, the GYTS in 2019 also indicate that 77% of current users in the use are able to, uh, to source or to buy these products from a typical store, a shop, street vendor, or a kiosk. And 37.1% of current users among the youth are not being prevented from buying these products despite the age restriction. So again, uh, this is very alarming for us. We have a provision in the, in the new uh, vape bill that unfortunately laps into law uh, pro, uh, restrictions uh, regarding uh, point of sale and marketing. But again, uh, we have to be very careful, very vigilant about how we continue to monitor them. And then exposure to tobacco and vape emissions, as I've said earlier, uh, Apart from direct tobacco users, uh, there's also a very alarming rate of uh, individuals that are, have uh, disease conditions merely due to exposure. So at home, we know that 29% of the youth are exposed to secondhand tobacco in any enclosed public place, for example, in, in malls or shopping centers, 41.7% of the youth are exposed to secondhand tobacco smoke. And even in outdoor public place, parks, sidewalks, pavements along the way, you know, we know that 45.2 uh, of the youth are exposed to secondhand tobacco smoke. So this is uh, part of our, of our uh, considerations and strategic interventions as well. So we hope to very uh, to convene or to rally more local governments, for example, to implement not just um, smoke-free environments in enclosed spaces, but this uh, data uh, uh, urges us to, to also lobby for more strict uh, smoke-free and vapory uh, uh, measures, especially in outdoor uh, places. Now, what is the Department of Health and our partners in the public health sector, public, uh, our partners in health, do we know regarding the, the crisis that we have in tobacco control? Now we have the National Tobacco Prevention Control Strategy. And um, we this is, this this is, was developed mainly uh, in honor of our sorry, in honor of our commitment to WHO of CTC and then in light of the UHC Act. Now we are also trying to scale up more health promotion interventions and disease control prevention. Uh, this control and prevention interventions in line with the UHC. Of course, we also have our other landmark legislation, the Tobacco Control, our Syntax, the Public Regulation Act. Uh, these are the main policy and legal basis for, uh, for the NTPCS that, uh, that we developed in the, in the Department of Health. The NTPCS 2020. 2020 to 2030, this is uh, our strategic plan in tobacco prevention and control. And in uh, its duration will be in the next uh, 10 or so years now in 2030. It is in line with uh, the ambition not in 2040. It's also in line with the goals and objectives of the of the Sulong Halusugan uh, banner, the health sector strategy for uh, the next medium term, as well as the uh, SDGs, our Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, the NTPCS is also, has also developed, uh, taking off from the gains of the previous iteration of the, of the strategy. Anyway, uh, the vision of the NTPCS is to, uh, to, is to have a healthy Filipinas that is protected from the harms of not just tobacco, but also, heated tobacco, vapor products, and other novel or emerging uh, products by 2030. The goal is to reduce 
the morbidity and mortality rates of NCDs that are attributable to the use and exposure to, to these products. And we uh, summarized uh, the objectives of the entire uh, NTPCS into, into three. One is decrease in prevalence. One is decrease in prevalence of uh, tobacco use among adults and the youth and to decrease, of course, the prevalence as well of vape use and uh, ever vape use among the youth. Number two is to decrease uh, the exposure uh, of uh, the general public to uh, smoking, to smoke, to cigarette smoke and to, to vape emissions and finally to increase the uptake in uh, cessation services. Under the three main objectives of the NTPCS, we have several uh, strategies. So under number one, on decreasing the prevalence of tobacco and vape use, key strategy is to mitigate the demand and supply of tobacco, cafeter tobacco and vapes, and to, uh, to strengthen regulations. For key objective number two, on, strength, on um, decrease, decreasing exposure from secondhand tobacco smoke and uh, vape emissions. And the strategy is to scale up your interventions not in uh, settings based, protecting people in communities, in schools, in workplaces from uh, exposure to these products. And for objective three, uh, in increasing smoke and vaping cessation, the strategy is to ensure that appropriate smoking and cessation services are accessible at all levels of care. Uh, these are the uh, specific strategies for each of the objectives, but we also identified some cross cutting strategies. So the last key strategies are uh, uh, essential for all of the, for, the, for all of the objectives. And first is uh, fostering the sector collaboration for health and awareness. This includes um, um, fostering partnership, now ensuring proper governance and network of uh, tobacco control networks and uh, uh, GHWs, for example, and doing uh, campaigns not in both above the line and uh, community level activation uh, activities. And uh, the cross-cutting strategies also include uh, continuous implementation of our JMC with the Civil Service Commission on protecting the bureaucracy from tobacco interference. Apart from these strategies, we also have some uh, implementation mechanisms. So for governance, we try to um, convene uh, a technical working group. We uh, try to maintain or to ensure policy coherence at all levels of governance with national to other sub-regional counterparts in our centers for health development. For legislation and policy, continuous uh, advocacy, policy advocacy for our priority legislations. And for financing, um, we have our syntaxes and we try to uh, secure or to, manage to ensure the priority allocation for health, you know, for UHC implementation, and then for the review and development of benefit packages for disease conditions related to tobacco use. Uh, uh, of course, collaborations and partnerships with our partners uh, in uh, other national government agencies, our partners in CSOs and the academe and other uh, partners. Capacity development for community level and uh, uh, cessation implementers and of course surveillance research in MNE to uh, inform our interventions in tobacco prevention and control and finally uh, recognition and awards. So these are the strategies that the Department of Health uh, commits to champion and uh, we cannot emphasize enough uh, the importance of partnership and uh, collaboration in ensuring a helpful environment for everyone, especially our youth. And I'd like to re-echo what um, the call to action of our uh, Director Rodi Carza of the Health Promotion Bureau. Uh, to, uh, I, I hope that we remain steadfast, everyone, our partners in health, our partners in tobacco control, to remain steadfast in our resolve to continue to fight for a smoke-free and vape-free communities. I think that ends uh, our portion of the presentation. Thank you very much to our partners in uh, the PCCP for inviting us. Happy World No Tobacco Day and have a uh, good morning. Thank you.
So, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Armand Arguelles. He is the OIC Chief Policy Planning, and uh, she is, he is uh, he also supervises the policy and legislative efforts of the HPB in support of the HPFS priority areas, including tobacco prevention and control. So for our uh, World No Tobacco Day uh, talks, so for our first, we will have a series of talks, uh, short talks on tobacco control and of course the impact of on vape. So for our uh, first speaker, uh, our topic is on impact of smoking and e-cigarettes or vaping, electronic nicotine delivery systems and electronic non-nicotine delivery systems by Dr. Maria Carnita Blanco Limpin. He's a doctor of medicine, and uh, she graduated from the University of Santo Tomas. She took her residency training in Mary Johnson Hospital, pulmonary fellowship training at the Philippine Heart Center. She is the medical specialist for Department of Education, Training, and Research at the Philippine Heart Center, the past president of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians, and an immediate past president of the Philippine College of Physicians. Yes, our second speaker, of course, we have to invite from the Philippine Pediatric Society because as what you have heard with the census, although the age limit is 18 years old, but those who are usually using them are quite younger. And this is very significant for us to have our second speaker who will talk on the impact of smoking and e-cigarettes as well as vaping in children in teenagers is Dr. Rizalina Raquel Gonzalez, MD. She had her Doctor of Medicine at UERM MMMC, Residency for Pediatrics at Medical Center Manila. She is a fellow of the Philippine Pediatric Society, an international fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics, Section on Nicotine and Tobacco Prevention and Treatment. She had her Certificate on Pediatric Environmental Health, International Pediatrics Association, and Pediatric Environmental Health Leadership Institute at, in Vancouver, Canada. Currently, she is the chair of the PPS Tobacco Control Advocacy Group, the past president of the PPS Southern Tagalog Chapter, the chair of the Department of Pediatrics of Qualimed Hospital, Santa Rosa Laguna, and the chair of the Department of Pediatrics in New Sinai MDI Hospital. Currently, she is the president of the Newborn Screening Society of the Philippines, AAP CDC PPS Tobacco Control Leadership Advocacy Workshop for Asian Region 2021, as well as Asia Pacific Collaborative Learning Network in Tobacco and Nicotine Control for 2022 and 2023. And she is, of course, the 2019 PPS Most Outstanding Pediatrician in Community Service Dr. Fedel Mundo Award. And for our third speaker, to talk about the impact of smoking and electronic cigarettes, vaping in the workplace, is Dr. Joel Santagel. She He graduated from the UP College of Medicine Intermed Program. He completed internal medicine residency and pulmonary fellowship at the UP PGH. He completed master's degree in occupational medicine at the UP College of Public Health and is a fellow of the Philippine College of Physicians and the Philippine College of Chess Physicians. He is an associate professor for of the UP College of Medicine and a training officer of the Department of Medicine Quirino Me Memorial Medical Center. He is uh, currently practicing at PGH, Quirino Medical Center, Manila Med, and MDH. So we'd like to proceed now for, with our first speaker. Yeah, sorry. Uh, good morning, everyone. 
So this morning, I have been tasked to talk about the impact on health of electronic smoking devices. Now, uh, this is just to show you the, my disclosures for uh, as far as conflict of interest is concerned. So there is really no argument right now that as far as smoking is concerned, there is no benefit that we can get from using tobacco. And although we have actually made some great strides no, in terms of reducing the prevalence of smoking from the, uh, from down to 20%, no, as shown in the 2018 National Nutrition Survey from as high as 35 in 2003. And as shown to us by by uh, the Department of Health in the recent GATS uh, or the Global Adult Tobacco Survey, the prevalence has actually also gone down to approximately about 19%. So uh, even if we have actually uh, reached already 19%, still the 19% prevalence is quite high with uh, more than 100 million no, uh, Filipino population. So uh, it is very important that we need to further uh, put into place strong tobacco control measures to ensure that this smoking prevalence will continue to go down. Now, uh, we have not really gone out of the tobacco epidemic, and yet we are now facing another emerging epidemic, and that is the vaping epidemic. So when we talk about vapes, the, uh, the ones that are available right now in the market will be uh, the electronic smoking devices that contain nicotine, which is called ENDS. And then you have the non-nicotine uh, containing electronic devices or the ENNDS. And uh, lately, we have the heated tobacco products, no? uh, which the tobacco industry would like to call as heat not burn, but it is more appropriate to really call them as heated tobacco products. Now, uh, let us just show to, uh, let me just show to you, no, what is the difference between a standard uh, tobacco cigarette from that of the electronic smoking devices, in particular, the heated tobacco products. So let me um, highlight first the, the one above, which is the conventional cigarette no and as um, many of the many of the advocates no of electronic smoking devices they keep on harping that with cigarette to really burn no so this actually leads to combustion and uh, this process of combustion actually will need a very high temperature to as high as 700 to 950 degrees centigrade uh in, for uh during puffs no and this combustion is actually leading limited only to the burning tip of the cigarette, wherein you have pyrolysis and thermal decomposition occurring in the oxygen deficient uh, distillation zone. And be, beside, immediately beside the combustion zone, you have the distillation zone. And it is this part of the cigarette where you expect the temperature to decrease, not to 600, then to as low as 260. Uh, 200 degrees centigrade. So in this distillation zone and also immediately beside it is a condensation filtration uh, zone of the cigarette. This is actually where all the toxic chemicals are actually being generated. No, uh, And below three, when the temperature reaches below 350 degrees centigrade, you now have the condensation of the less volatile compounds generating now a dense aerosol consisting of growing droplets and solid particles. So as a consequence, the cigarette smoke actually uh, consists now of particulate and vapor phases. So the mainstream smoke is actually the one uh, where you where, that contains all these chemicals, no, and it is the one that is actually being uh, inhaled by the smoker when the smoker takes a puff of cigarette. And then the side stream smoke, on the other hand, is the one that is being released, no, in the combustible end of the cigarette. Now going to the heat 
related tobacco products, they always say, particularly the tobacco industry, that heated tobacco product is different from a uh, conventional tobacco cigarette because with conventional, sabi nga nila, sinusunog ang sigarilyo, whereas ang heated tobacco products, you just warm it or you heat it. But again, remember, as I have said, no, you don't really need to have a very high uh, temperature for all the chemicals to be generated. No, so in fact, it is at lower temperature where the chemicals that are found in a cigarette will actually be developed, will be generated, so that when the smoker or the user of the heated tobacco products uh, takes a puff, he is able to inhale all those chemicals. And in the cigarette, how many chemicals are found in that smoke? That is around 7,000 chemicals. And remember, in the heated tobacco products, this is not similar to an e-cigarette that contains only e-liquids, okay? In heated tobacco products, it makes use of tobacco product, no? Major is slimmer, maliit, manipis, but it still contains the same number of chemicals, is, uh, but maybe because medyo mababa lang ang, ang temperature that is being used, then uh, the concentration of these chemicals, as, um, as found in some other studies, must lower ang concentration. But it still, it contains many chemicals that included uh, carcinogens no, and other toxic chemicals found in our conventional cigarette. The same is true for the electronic cigarettes no uh, because with electronic cigarettes what is be, what is happening is that you also hit hit the e-juices and the, it is in the e-juices where you will be able to uh, have all those chemicals no and uh, when you take a puff of those uh, e-cigarettes then you are able to inhale also all those chemicals including the flavors no the chemicals in those flavorings and also the nicotine as well as other chemicals that were that will be developed through the interaction action of uh, the heat the heated electronic the heated e-liquid together with the um, heating material like your wicks so this is on the middle of this um, slides I'm just showing to you the uh, different generation of e-cigarettes and right now what is very common particularly in the young uh, are the fourth generation uh, e-cigarettes. Why is it popular in the young? Because though these uh, e-cigarettes uh, look like one of their devices, no? Yung mga flash drive. It looks like their flash drive and some of them are really colored, no? Um, um, very attractively that entices the young to use these e-cigarettes. Now, on the right, you'll be able to see many uh, the studies in the US, in Australia, and in United Kingdom. Now, just for uh, to uh, to make the story short, no, all these chemi all these studies, no, done in these countries, they have actually shown that number one, even those e-cigarettes or electronic smoking devices that claim to that claim to not have nicotine, uh, still has many of them containing nicotine. Number two, that when they report that their nicotine concentration is at this particular level, the studies have actually shown just like what they what was seen in the UK that uh, the nicotine content actually is in excess of what is seen in the labeled value. So in short, we cannot trust what we see in the labels of this electronic cigarettes. Now, these are just some of the chemicals that are found in uh, cigarettes, no? in cigarette smoke. So as you can see here, many uh, of them are, uh, are um, 
the nitrosamines, which are known carcinogens or in, in short, cancer-causing agents, no? including benzene, toluene, acetaldehyde, formaldehyde. And then you can see there are other toxic chemicals no? that are found in this that includes also uh, hard metals no? like your lead, your manganese, your magnesium. So all of these no, are found in... Uh, in a standard cigarette. So as I've said, in the smoke of a standard cigarette, you have around 7,000 chemicals. And what about the chemicals found in e-cigarette or in vape pen aerosols? Will there be less or do you think uh, it's just the same? Let me show this to you. This is actually a study done by the US FDA. Okay, and lo and behold, all of these chemicals that were found in, in standard cigarettes were also found in e-cigarettes or vape pen aerosols. And uh, if you look at this, no, the, the compounds in yellow are actually contained in the list of the FDA 2012 harmful and potentially harmful substances. Now, uh, this is actually a study by Kim et al. on all 105 uh, electronic devices, the li replacement liquids. And in this particular study, they were able to show various tobacco smoke nitrosamines in all. No, walang electron, walang e liquids that do not contain uh, any of these various tobacco smoke nitrosamines. Lahat sila may nit nitrosamines. And we know that nitrosamines, no, uh, uh, if you um, use higher temperature, you can expect this level of this concentration of nitrosamines to even increase. No? And therefore, since you have presence of nitrosamines that are known cancer-causing agents, then there is the potential risk of getting cancer. And similar to a standard cigarette, cancer may be expected not only in the lungs, but it can also be expected in other parts of the body, particularly maybe the mouth, the throat, no, and other parts of the body. We can expect that since you have a lot of nitrosamines in those liquids. Now, this actually is quite um, uh, common. It's also a, a study that was uh, that was uh, noted no by Beck by Becky et al. And uh, it showed the presence now of carbonyl compounds created by the oxidation of the e-juice from contact with the heated nichrome wire. So makikita ninyo, no? uh, if the e-liquid or the e-juice comes into contact with the heated nichrome wire, then you now develop all these carbonyl compounds. So what are the two most common compounds found in e-juices? Now, number one is your glycerol. And this is actually coming from uh, the vegetable glycerin, which is actually responsible for the smoke density. Mas maraming ilagay na vegetable glycerin sa e-liquid, mas, ma, mas dense yung smoke that it can create. No? And lo and behold, when that uh, when the, that uh, the glycerin the glycerol comes in contact with the heated nichrome wire, what they have shown is the formation of the acroline. Acroline is a known herbicide. Uh, that is actually used to kill weeds, okay? And we also know that acroline is uh, proven to cause cancer. Therefore, uh, we can actually expect that with this acroline, this can actually cause acute lung injury and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and may all also cause asthma. And of course, since it is a known carcinogen, lung cancer. Now, the other chemical that is uh, more commonly seen in e-juices will be your propylene glycol. The propylene glycol is actually the one that is responsible for the throat heat 
and the flavor intensity. Kung mas gusto ninyo mas tumaas yung yung intensity ng flavor, dadagdagan nila yung propylene glycol na yan. And propylene the glycol on the other hand, no? When it comes into contact with the heated nichrome wire, it now forms what we call the formaldehyde as well as the acetaldehyde. And these two uh, compounds are, again, known carcinogen. Both uh, increase the risk to the development of cancer. Now, uh, let me again show you, uh, this is quite a recent uh, study in, uh, that was published in Circulation 2022. No, This is a very um, a respect uh, journal no, by the cardiologists. So looking into the cardiopulmonary effects of e-cigarette use and from cardiovascular studies, they noted adverse cardiovascular e effects no, such as the activation of the sympathetic nervous system, yung paninigas ng mga blood vessels no and endothelial dysfunction among cigarette users furthermore uh, they have also uh, shown that in there were increased biomarkers of pulmonary disease that were uh, noted no among people who use vapes therefore uh, from this particular study, the authors actually recommended that clinicians should monitor the health risk of e-cigarette use, discourage non-smokers and adolescents from using e-cigarettes, as and also discourage the smokers from engaging in dual use. Now, uh, this is another study by Rao et al. showing that aerosol or smoke from a wide range of electronic smoking devices that, in that included those uh, with nicotine and without nicotine, and even uh, the heated tobacco products like your ICOS. And now, the, it also look into the more uh, recent uh, development as far as the electronic smoking devices. And this is the electronic vaping device devoid of heating coil. No, remember, they're looking into now trying to uh, get rid of a heating coil because they know because the studies have really shown that the that uh, that uh, the um, the issues when it comes into contact with the with the uh, heated nichrome wire can actually uh, cause the development of acrolein formaldehyde and acetaldehyde. And in this particular study, no, kahit ano pa mang electronic smoking devices pa ang na ang na tiningnan nila, all of these devices have shown impairment of flow-mediated dilation. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, sumisikip ang daanan ng dugo. No? So, even with just a single exposure to the aerosol from ends from your HTPs, it can cause acute vascular impairment, which is similar to cigarette smoking and is therefore not harmless. Okay? So what about the odds of getting COPD in vape users? Now, as a pulmonologist, this is one of my concerns. In this study by Perez in 2018, no, they examined the association between e-cigarette use and the development of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease among U.S. adults. And they found that the odds of developing COPD among e-cigarette users is 86% higher than those who do not use e-cigarettes. Again, in 2019, there were two studies that came out. No, uh, One is the study by Bata et al. So uh, looking into the odds of COPD in former or current smokers, and they noted that if you are a former or current ECGR user, you are at 25% higher risk of developing COPD compared to those who are not using e-cigarettes. And then furthermore, in this study, they have shown that if you are uh, using e-cigarette on top of cigarette smoking, the risk even becomes higher. And actually, the risk of uh, using both standard cigarette and e-cigarette 
uh, is higher compared to using just uh, cigarette alone or e-cigarette. On uh, Williams, on the other hand, uh, in February of 2019, did a cross-sectional population uh, study, and uh, they have actually shown that non-cigarette smokers who use e-cigarettes were two times more likely to have asthma or COPD than non-users. So clearly, uh, all these three studies no, from 2018 to 2019 have shown that if you are using e-cigarettes, you are at higher risk of developing COPD and even uh, having asthma. The reason being that it contains these chemicals that can, that can cause irritation to the respiratory epithelium and thus causing damage to the respiratory system. So what about this? No, this is actually a more population uh, data that we can actually show that really uh, e-cigarette is not less harmful. It is equally the same harm. It causes the same harm, no? maybe even more than, uh, electric, than uh, regular cigarettes. But uh, what am I saying? In 2018, in 2020, uh, but, uh, they have a, a lot of people in the U.S. Uh, got sick and was admitted to the hospital because of what they call as the e-valley or the e-cigarette vape, uh, vape a uh, vape associated lung injury. No, so 2,807 were hospitalized and 68 of these um, died. No, because of e-valley. May chuna hinto po yung data that are being gathered on e-valley because of the uh, pandemic. But you can see here the latest no uh, e-valley case that was actually uh, documented in the U.S. came in February of 2022. And, were, and this uh, particular patient died as a result of vaping. So again, it is showing to us that e-cigarette is not is not safe. It is also not less harmful as what the industry would like us to believe. Now, what about the effect on of exposure to secondhand emissions of these electronic smoking devices? The Both the U.S. Sur Surgeon General as well as the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine have warned us about the risk of inhaling secondhand uh, electronic smoking device emissions created when an e-cigarette user exhales the chemical cocktail created by these devices. And in 2016, the Surgeon General have concluded that secondhand emissions contain nicotine, ultrafine particles, flavoring such as your diacetyl, and, uh, which is actually a chemical linked to, to serious lung diseases. No, so the lung disease here is really that uh, it is destroying no the the lungs, and then it. Uh, the study also showed that the, the secondhand emissions also contains volatile organic compounds such as your benzene, which is known carcinogen, uh, and this benzene are also found in car exhaust, and the heavy metals such as your nickel, tin, and lead. So, wag ho kayong maniniwala pag sinabi lang ho nila na ang mga... Ang, ang usok na nakikita ninyo sa e-cigarette ay vape. Kasi pag sinabi ho na nilang vapor, ang ibig sabihin lang ho, puro gas lang po yun. Yun yung liquid it that turned into gas. But this study is showing us that it is not just purely gas. It also contains all these organic compounds as well as heavy metals. Therefore, it means that if you are exposed to these uh, uh, emissions, not this secondhand smoke coming from e-cigarettes, then you are also, uh, you can also expect the potential risk no, or to the exposure to all these chemicals. 
Now, uh, why are we now uh, focusing or really uh, working so hard on e-cigarettes? The reason because uh, we are actually uh, seeing a rapid increase in the number of people, particularly the young, no, uh, using a lot of these e-cigarettes. So this is actually the global uh, global scenario of uh, the use of e-cigarettes. No? And you see here from 2012, makikita ninyo dramatic no? ang bilis ng pag-akyat ng, uh, pag ng mga tao na padami ng padami ang gumagamit ng e-cigarettes. And then among the teens this is actually it's very good that dr dr Rees is here with us because this is one of the major concerns many of the ones that were noted to use e-cigarettes are really the very young and even in the e-valley cases no that was noted in the 2020 many of those who got sick are actually Actually, among the youngs, no, kahit man nasa er, late 20s or early 30s, sila yung mga nagkasakit from E-Valley. Now, what about Philippine data? If you look at the major May edad, sa Global Adult Tobacco Survey, 15 years and older, the prevalence of those who ever tried vaping is 2.8%. But if you look at those who ever tried vaping in the 13 to 15 years old, no, from the Global Youth Tobacco Survey in 2021, you see a more a really a much higher prevalence compared to the to the adults, no. So 14.1 percent, and that is why uh, this is really very concerning for all of us doctors, and. Please note that in the National Nutrition Survey in 2019, it has actually shown that 44% of those using e-cigarettes are non-smokers, hindi ho naninigarilyo. And therefore, uh, yung sinasabi ho ng mga tobacco industry, ng mga vape industry, that they are offering uh, these e-cigarettes no, for to, as an alternative to smoking, hindi po totoo. Because you see, 44% of those vaping are really the young and they are non-smokers. No? Hindi, pa nga, hindi pa nga nagsisigarilyo and yet they are using oh, these e-cigarettes. No? So uh, it shows therefore hindi ka naninigarilyo and dapat mas wala kang uh, risk no, for potential harm. But since 44% are non-smokers, no? uh, therefore, that is really not harm reduction, but rather it is really increased harm. So, ang madalas na sinasabi, less harmful daw ang electronic smoking devices. Pala at ito ang marketing ploy ng mga tobacco and vaping industry. Now, let me just remind everyone, when we talk about ha uh, true harm reduction, dapat po, this, this uh, harm reduction is being shown as a strong body of evidence, no? Uh, so, and that it has that intervention that makes use of harm reduction should be practical, feasible, effective, safe, and cost-effective. And that the goal of true harm reduction is not only to lessen the harm to an individual, but also uh, as uh, on a population base level. Ibig sabihin, kapag yung mga kasama mo, hindi dapat din ma-expose. Like yung usok, dapat hindi ma-expose sa harm yung mga nakapaligid doon sa gumagamit ng uh, isang intervention. And that the intervention is in itself not harmful. So, nag, nag fulfill ba ng criteria ng true harm reduction ang electronic smoking devices? I can say that the intervention by itself is not harmful. Diba? Because it contains chemicals. Chemicals that are known to be toxic, chemicals that are known to be irritating, and chemicals that are known to cause cancer. And therefore, the intervention by itself is not safe. It has, uh, therefore, hindi, hindi, it is harmful in short. So, ang goal, 
it, does it protect both the individual and the uh, the population uh, both the individual and population i can say no because you can see that uh, with the chemicals that are found in that uh, smoke created by the emissions no, of the e-cigarettes, uh, then uh, persons who are exposed to this will actually have the risk of getting COPD, asthma, and even cancer. Now, is the is the harm reduction based from a strong body of evidence so far we really do not have that data that will show to us na talagang uh, it can be practical it can be effective so again if you look at the continuum of risk no when we talk about smoking then dapat ang gusto natin if we want harm reduction so it should come from the most harmful to least harmful no para mas maging mas tatanggapin ho natin and for us doctors yun ang pinaka importante but you look at this no this is uh, the spectrum that i want you to look at non users Tapos, e-cigarette, HT, heated tobacco products, cigarette smoking, cigarette plus other products. No, kung ang nagsisigarilyo, ano ang gusto natin? Dapat, para maging true harm reduction, dapat ko from cigarette smoking, ma huminto sa paninigarilyo. That is what we want to see. Hindi ho yung maghihinto ka sa paninigarilyo, mag-shift ka sa heated tobacco products. Gusto ba nating bumaba lang ang harm by a small amount of percentage but you are still at exposed to the risk of getting the disease. Hindi, di ba? So, ang mangyayari lang dyan, it's just a matter of time, you will still get sick. Now, many of the data also, particularly in the US, have shown yung iba, naninigarilyo na at nag gumagamit pa ng e-cigarette. So it's this harm reduction hindi that is really more of increased harm. Now, again, this is just to highlight why kailangan talagang ihinto din natin yung mga electronic smoking devices na yan. Because this data from the US have shown that you look at this, 59% ng mga naggumagamit ng e-cigarettes o nagbe-vape are still smoking. Tapos 11% of those using e-cigarettes have never smoked. Therefore, at the population level, the net effect is really more of increased harm. What about use of ESD for smoking cessation? The US FDA has not found any e-cigarettes to be safe and effective in helping smokers to quit. Kaya nga po para sa amin, lalo na kaming mga pulmonologists and even for the internees, no, yung mga grupo namin sa Philippine College of Physicians, we are not recommending uh, electronic smoking devices for smoking cessation because there is no clear evidence, hard evidence that number one, it is indeed effective and much le much more. There are no evidence that it can be safe no, to use as a cessation device. Therefore, I'd like to end this uh, talk by saying that if you really want to help uh, people to uh, stop smoking, there is really nothing more powerful that you can do except to get them into a smoking cessation program, help them be able to quit smoking more successfully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Limpin. That was very enlightening. And we have learned a lot of things and the gravity of the effects of vaping as well as smoking, given na po yung smoking, but vaping is, wow, that was very dangerous talaga sa health natin, especially that the target of these industries are the youth who are just thinking that this is a fad. So, and that's one reason why we are here today and one of the highlights also of today's event is our unified position statement 
against the use of vape. And I think we have a lot of people who are with us today and we share the same sentiments, we share the same advocacy, and we wanted this one voice to be amplified by all medical societies. And Dr. Lina would like to introduce to us the persons who are here today and who is crying in one with us for this say no to tobacco and vape smoke. Um, yes, Dr. Ronel. So actually, uh, the Philippine College of Chest Physicians in uh, collaboration and in, in alliance with the other medical societies have already stated uh, there's our stand on, on vape. And uh, with, with me to here in the Philippine College of Chest Physicians office is uh, Dr. Uh, of course, our president, Dr. Eileen Aniceto, and uh, also our PCP president, Dr. Diana Payawal, our uh, also uh, Dr. Ulysses Doroteo, who is the president of the Southeast Asian Tobacco Control Alliance, and from the PMA, our vice president, Dr. Hector Santos, who will uh, join us in the signing. So I'd like to call on Dr. Eileen uh, for the reading of the first part of the statement. And also together with us virtually is the PCOM representative who is currently virtually joining us today. I'd like to call on Dr. Payawal because uh, hi, hi um, good morning to everyone. Um, the Philippine College of Physicians fully supports the physician statement on electronic cigarettes, um, electronic nicotine delivery device system. The e-cigarettes and other vaping products are not really safe. I mean, everybody knows that. There are several reports that have documented its link to lung injury, termed as EVALI. As of February 18, 2020, 2,800 cases of EVALI have been reported to the Centers for Disease Control, which led to death in 68 cases. Locally, the first reported Evilly case was reported last November 2019, which involved a 18-year-old um, uh, individual from Visayas. So ito pa lang po, I think, uh, is a growing concern, and therefore we need to really um, put our feet, our, our hands together to control this. E-cigarettes are not subjected to the same rigorous standards as a pharmaceutical product or drug. And the Philippine Food and Drug Administration has not approved the use of e-cigarettes and other vaping products as smoking cessation strategy. It is not recommended as a smoking cessation device its use only leads to the smoker to continue the nicotine addiction by shifting to e-cigarettes and um, instead of actually quitting. E-cigarettes can potentially target the youth because of its um, marketed appeal and can pave the way for subsequent tobacco use among the young and even the children. The use of e-cigarettes may undermine smoke-free policies that are already in place and the increasing normalization of smoking. Denormalization, rather, the increasing denormalization of smoking. And therefore, the Philippine College of Physicians, um, in coordination with the Philippine College of Chess Physicians, considers e-cigarettes harmful and do not recommend its use. Therefore, we fully support the Philippine College of Physicians unequivocally against uh, the vaping ban. And uh, the Philippine College of Physicians stands by um, this uh, advocacy program of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians. Thank you. I'd like to call on our... Uh... PMA uh, representative, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. He Hector Santos. From the Philippine Medical Association, thanks to the Philippine College of Chess Physicians for this action. We fully support from the Philippine Medical Association the action against 
the electronic cigarettes. Uh, we are, are one with them on its effect on the youth. It is a concern that the e-cigarettes have the potential to promote smoking among the young. They are marketed in such a way as regular citizens as regular cigarettes, and even with candy-like flavors, such as chocolates and fruits, like banana and, and strawberry, that this make it more appealing to this younger generation and encourage the young to try this product. Furthermore, they are being sold without age restriction and that they may lead the young people to try their other tobacco products. Most e-cigarettes still contain nicotine, the highly addictive uh, products uh, which are present in tobacco. Nicotine is especially harmful to the young people. Using such products under age 25, during which time the brain has not yet fully developed, has, not, has been proven to affect the memory, attention, and learning. So convincing the data that has been established that young people who use e-cigarettes are most likely to smoke regular cigarettes. This may pose as a risk to potentially induce the young to become addicted to nicotine. So the Philippine Medical Association is in support of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians fight against e-cigarettes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Santos. Uh, I'd like to call on Dr. Ulysses Dorotheo. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you to the Philippine College of Chest Physicians for inviting us uh, this morning. Um, I'm also on the committee with the Philippine Medical Association, and uh, on behalf of the Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance also, we really want to send the message that e-cigarettes are not safe. They contain many chemicals, thousands of chemicals. Uh, of course, we start with propylene glycol and vegetable glycerine, which are used in theater fog. But uh, even these uh, uses, which we see on stage, are not healthy. They're, they're harmful to the lungs. And uh, the aerosol, as you heard, not uh, vapor, as you heard from Dr. Uh, Limpin earlier, they contain various toxic chemicals, volatile organic compounds um, that cause irritation to the eyes, nose, and throat. They damage the liver, kidney, and nervous system. Many flavors are toxic, um, including diacetyl that causes bronchiolitis obliterans or popcorn lung. Thankfully, these this chemical has been banned in many countries, but they still contain many flavors such as uh, cinnamaldehyde, which is also very toxic and uh, causes severe lung damage. They also contain formaldehyde, which is cancer-causing. And so um, when we look at all the different chemicals, the range of chemicals that compose e-cigarette and heated tobacco aerosols, and they come in many concentrations across many different uh, uh, manufacturers uh, and models and uh, uh, variations, um, while there is very little that we know in terms of chemistry, um, because of the limited amount of time to study these various uh, devices, uh, research already shows that even popular brands such as Juul and Boost um, in the U.S. contain nearly 2,000 chemicals, which are both known and unknown. This is according to a Johns Hopkins University analysis. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and various uh, health authorities have conducted uh, ongoing investigations um, on vaping-related illnesses. And this is in the U.S., where, as you've heard, thousands of cases of adults and youths already have had lung injuries, um, many of them acute, but some of them converting to chronic uh, lung injury and many of them have, have died. So e-valley or e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injuries can be very severe and life-threatening. And in the Philippines, we have had at least one case of a 16-year-old female in the Visayas 
who had been using e-cigarettes for at least six months. So these figures are very alarming. And we stand with the Philippine College of Chest Physicians, the Philippine Medical Association, all of our tobacco control um, colleagues in saying that e-cigarettes, heated tobacco products are not safe. Um, they will never be safe. There is no safe e-cigarette and no safe cigarette. And we should really be focusing on helping our governments produce policies, not only to reduce smoking, but to help reduce the supply of uh, tobacco, which is to help our tobacco farmers shift to alternative crops and help secure food for our countrymen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Doroteo. And for finally, I'd like to call on our president, Dr. Aileen Aniceto. And so I'll be reading the last part of the position statement of the Philippine College of Chest Physicians on the issue of quality control of e-cigarettes. Currently, e-cigarettes are not under rigor rigorous manufacturing and marketing standards, as are many of the pharmaceutical products. The US FDA have found out that the actual amount of nicotine in the e-cigarettes are different than those contained on the labels. While some e-cigarettes are being marketed as having no nicotine, they may actually contain nicotine. The Philippine FDA also warns the public on adverse health effects and safety concerns associated with the use of electronic nicotine and non-nicotine delivery systems, more commonly known as electronic cigarettes. On the issues on denormalizing smoking, under, undermining smoking cessation, and maintenance of nicotine addiction, the use of e-cigarette uh, as an aid to quit smoking may not be helpful as it still perpetuates the smoking behavior. Furthermore, the use of e-cigarettes in poorly ventilated areas can be hazardous in as much uh, particulate matter, air nicotine, and volatile organic compounds, which can accumulate and affect indoor air pollution uh, quality. So this may pose a risk not only to the active user, but also to the general public. And these are our recommendations. The Philippine College of Chest Physicians urges the Philippine Food and Drug Administration to prohibit the e-cigarette companies from promoting their product as a less harmful and a viable alternative for smoking cessation. It is not. The PCCP highly encourages the public to stop or not even try to use e-cigarettes and vaping products. And the PCCP implores our government and legislators to support a smoke-free and vape-free environment. So this is the end of the position statement. Thank you, Dr. Eileen. And uh, I'd also like to invite in the panel for the signing, uh, Dr. Imelda Amateo. Actually, she has a lot of caps. She is currently the Vice President of the Philippine College of Physicians, immediate past president of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians, and will also be representing the Department of Health for today. And ASH, Action on Smoking and Health. <laughs> Okay. So, in behalf of all the organizations and the Department of Health, as mentioned by Dr. Gina Cabrera, uh, I am in full support in behalf of the Department of Health of ASH, of course, as the immediate past president of PCCP and the vice president of the Philippine College of Physicians. I am one with you representing all these organizations, and we fully support this statement uh, in which we are also a part in its crafting. Thank you, everyone. Currently, we are witnessing the signing of our unified statement, our position against the use of vape. And this is for the benefit of all Filipinos out there who mistakenly marketed the vape, that vape is less harmful as compared to cigarettes. And with that, the Philippine College of Chess Physicians 
is very much thankful for all your presence this morning. And we will also be having our local signing through the different local chapters of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians this coming June, which is the month for no smoking campaign. Also together with those who are present from the PCP, PMA, DOH, we also have our representative virtually from the Philippine College of Occupational Medicine. I would like to read, PCOM also supports World No Tobacco Day by promoting and implementing programs on smoke-free workplaces. Congratulations to PCCP, DOH, PMA, and all the stakeholders of this event. This message came from Dr. Ria Pajardo of the Philippine College of Occupational Medicine. Thank you very much. This event was made possible with the help of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians Advocacy Chair, Dr. Albert Rapanan, the Board of Directors or the Board Members of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians, the efforts of DOH, WHO, as well as the local chapters of the different regions here of the Philippine College of Chess Physicians. And of course, Dr. Ronald, we have to, to remember that this is also supported by the Philippine Pediatric Society. Yes. So, kakampi po natin ang Pediatric Society because they are very much concerned, especially with vape. Because they will be the ones who will be taking care of those, especially the minors and the young, and mag eventually yung mga young professionals natin Apo. who eventually in the future. So sila yung higit na maapektuhan. And uh, we have already observed that not even 18 years old ang apektado lamang. Even the 13 to 15 years old are already being exposed to vape. Agree po, Doctora. And... This is not quite unusual for us kasi makikita natin sa daan may tumatawid na mga naka-uniform at nagbe-vape kasi nga may mga different forms of vape devices na at we have heard that yung pinaka-common ngayon is yung disposable ones which is more cheaper at least and more accessible for this youth and kailangan natin to, to move one step ahead on this and at least as early as now, we are having this campaign. And uh, uh, hindi alam ng mga iba, uh, mga anak nila nagbe because some of them are already disguised as USB. Some meron na sa oh. watches. Some of them are already in the hoodie. So, so grabe. Okay. So we can we can proceed now to our next uh, next uh, speaker. So thank you very much. So starstruck talaga ako dito, Ronald, because uh, I have the past presidents presidents with me today. Yes. And, uh, so, uh, but of course, it's also a, a, an honor uh, to present our next speaker. Na also very stellar then and. Uh, 
Kumbaga, big time and uh, kakumpit talaga natin siya. Thank okay, you, Dr. So, Dr. Yeah. Uh, Riz Gonzalez. Dr. Good morning po. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning and happy World No Tobacco Day. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak today to help us pediatricians protect our kids from this rising use of vape among Filipino teens. Kami ang in focus, no? So the GYPS has really uh, shown the rising prevalence of Filipino children taking up this very bad habit. Thank you to Dr. Caraza, Mr. Arguelles, Dr. Limpin for giving our audience the background on the vape uh, epidemic that is happening in our country. Children may be one-third of our population, but they are all of our future. Smoking is a pediatric disease, and so is vaping. More than 80% of smokers start before the age of 18. The 2021 WHO Global Report on Tobacco Epidemic has sounded an alarm already in 2021 on the fast-rising prevalence of vape users in the young. Children and adolescents who use ends can double the risk of smoking cigarettes. Isn't this alarming? To quote, as, cig as cigarette sales have fallen, tobacco companies have been aggressively marketing new products like e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products and even lobby governments to limit their regulation. It's happening in our country. Their goal is simple, to hook another generation on nicotine, and we cannot let that happen. This safer concept of vaping has been used and reported by Public Health England way back in 2015. It is not true for children, and many studies for the next eight years have proven this wrong. That are in safer means risk for a young due to their biologic and physiologic vulnerability of their developing brain to the age of 25 years old, not at 18 to nicotine of whatever form. The risk-taking behaviors of teens makes them victims of this bad habit. If you have been following the news, UK and even Australia has an alarming steep rise of vape users among their teens. That R is a true risk, since the vape aerosol may seem to have lesser chemicals and so far based on the report in 2021 by the John Hopkins University, 2,000 chemicals have been identified so far, more so the hydrocarbon compounds associated with combustion are present as well even though vape aerosol is generated by heating. To illustrate, Smoking is jumping from the 25th floor. Vaping is from the 10th floor. But mind you, the results are both catastrophic in the long run. A carcinogen, no matter how much amount there is, is still a carcinogen. Look at this graphical illustration of the vape chemicals. Just merely looking at this one would remind you of the chemicals found in cigarette stick. But what is very deceptive here is the nicotine mix in attractive flavorings. Who is the most vulnerable target but the young? Our teens. In April 2019, the PPS Tobacco Control Advocacy Group made this Nico Chanak animation to help us convey our message to the young. and body as well. Nico Chanak is based from the folkloric Yanak. Small, scary, and it spells harm. That's why the age of access has been lobbied to be at 25 years old following the Tobacco 21 movement in the U.S. At 21 years old, because since the brain, specifically that prefrontal cortex is fast developing, till age 25. The PFC is our executive officer. It is where the most dopamine receptors are found and where nicotine lodges to release the pleasure chemicals, the dopamine. The young brain, if used to the pleasurable reward of nicotine, 
will be rewired differently and would depend and need nicotine for task completion, hence the addiction, very poor PFC. The effects in the executive function of the young will be badly affected. Impulse control, behavior, emotions, and higher form all learning. And that's all due to repeated use and exposure of the developing brain to nicotine. And we don't want this to happen to our young. From a free base nicotine that is present in the first to the third generation vapes, addition of the benzoic acid has made this into a nicotine salt for the fourth generation vapes in pods. Small, concealable, just like a USB device. Nicotine in this form is less harsh and more compact to fit into a smaller volume of a pod vape. 0.7 ml pod can pack as much as 20 milligrams of nicotine or even higher, equivalent to a pack of cigarettes. This is quite alarming since the user may not have this information and would think that this form gives lesser nicotine and other chemicals. This is deception to the max for the young user. Just imagine the nicotine hit in the young and the fast addiction that will happen. Well, the industry knows how to attract the young, their main target. The varied flavors of no more than 16,000 from fruits, soda, cakes, and candies, plus their unregulated online accessibility and learning the tricks online, now via the very popular TikTok, plus the technology equals teen attraction, or I may say victims. The perfect recipe is inherent. The raging hormones, the developing brain, their mental health. Attractiveness of this potent substance mixed with the profit-oriented marketing spells disaster, addiction among our children, right? E-cigarette is just here for us, nearly two decades being commercially introduced in 2003. The potential risks are posted here. Nicotine addiction, the key for one's use and exposure to the rest of the chemicals and carcinogens to date is 2000, but I will call it counting. Lead has been detected in the e-liquid itself, and not just from the coils of the device, but through the heating e-liquid component. Isn't this alarming? The e-valley cases before the pandemic has caused many young lives to have severe diseases, which caused documented deaths. It may have been due to the THC and vitamin E acetate, which have been mixed with the e-liquid, but there are e-valley cases with those, without those substances. Still a big threat. The second-hand and third-hand aerosol equally post same health risk to everyone. The use of e-cigarettes has been proven by a lot of studies to be a gateway to smoking or even dual user. Accidental ingestion of nicotine by the younger kids due to the attractiveness of flavors and containers also has been reported that one milligram per kilogram is fatal when ingested by an infant. High dose of nicotine can cause seizures among the young users. What do we know so far? Nicotine addiction, uncontrolled asthma, worsening of asthma symptoms because the lung function deteriorates with exposure to vape aerosol, aggravating their TH2 responses, inflammation being the most prominent. The heated aerosol going in and out of the airways, the nostrils in particular has caused epistaxis and allergic rhinitis. The lung immune Defenses are decreased with smoking, and so with vaping. Add up to the hand-to-mouth action when vaping makes one vulnerable at risk for pneumonia with five to seven times risk of getting COVID as seen by the Stanford study in November 2020. Eval is still happening, and the possibility of lung fibrosis in these eval cases are those with severe and critical pneumonia may have COPD in the young. This is a scary scenario, right? Vape is just still with us for two decades. Hence, we still have cancer reported yet. 
we all know it takes more years, approximately 30 years, but should we wait for that before we raise the alarm, awareness, and strict or banning these products? Vape use is a complicated one. The use of the device, unlike that of conventional cigarettes, are variable. The type of vape first to the first fourth generation has different power voltage, heating coils, which the user can manipulate based on this preference to make vape cloud tricks or just to kick the habit like that of smoking. More propylene glycol for more nicotine or more vegetable glycerin for, veg or for bigger clouds. Add up to the flavors to complete the pleasurable vaping experience. With such variability, the indoor air particulates are variable. But one sure thing, vape aerosol has a significant effect having the harmful 2.5 microgram air particulates enough to cause inflammation to the airways as reported in the NASM report in 2018. We only know the short-term respiratory and cardiovascular effects. But the long-term effects is still in the horizon. Who will be much affected? But our children, their environment as well. We are fortunate to have this commentary article published in Pediatrics last March 2023 about the e-cigarette regulation in the Philippines. Before the pandemic, through Senator Pia Cayetano, the age of access has been raised to 21 with restriction of flavors to just tobacco and menthol, raising excise taxes on e-liquids through RA 11457. But this regressed and reversed with a controversial vape law in August 2022. That is the RA 11900 in place now. The bottom line, the challenge is on and upon us health advocates, especially the pediatricians, where we should screen, intervene, that is, anticipate, ask, advise, assess, always in our preventive clinics, the anticipatory guidance, and assist and arrange for cessation counseling whenever we have gathered a user. Nicotine replacement, unfortunately, is not allowed for those who are 18 years old and below based on the effects of nicotine in the developing brain. This world, no tobacco day. Hope everyone is convinced that we need to grow more food crops, not tobacco, if we want our children, our future to have a healthier and safe future. We need the government efforts to realize and strictly regulate these hazardous products to protect our young, the Filipino children. Our pediatric pulmonologists have made this poster. Peep and pop, their icons of a pink and healthy lung, happily living in an abode with food crops and clean air. Our dream for our children. I want to end my talk with a favorite quote. It is easier to build strong children than to repair a broken man. Nicotine addiction? through smoking and vaping, definitely creates a lot of broken man. We doctors should not do harm. Vaping is not harm reduction for teens and children. It is harm introduction. We have this big responsibility to keep our children away from vaping and smoking. It should be a world free, of tobacco and nicotine for our children, our future. Safe means it is a smoke and aerosol-free environment for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Doctora. So for our next speaker. Hi, Dr. Sanchegel. So I'd like to call on Dr. Sanchegel for his uh, talk. So good morning, everyone, and uh, congratulations for that uh, uh, agreement signing. So 
Uh, this would be a brief uh, presentation. So thanks uh, also to Dr. Limpin and Dr. Gonzalez for their excellent talks and discussion. Now, uh, as mentioned, this would be a short uh, discussion and short uh, introduction to issues uh, related to uh, smoking and vaping in the workplace. So particularly, we'll be focusing on the potential effects and the benefits of not uh, vaping or smoking in the workplace. Now, first of all, uh, just remember that uh, we have the law. We have the laws that uh, says or states that uh, smoking and even the use of vape uh, is uh, banned from uh, the public and enclosed spaces. And uh, particularly enclosed spaces would mean the, your workplaces. So workstations, your offices, uh, factories, industries, etc. So definitely uh, in, in itself, uh, uh, smoking and uh, definitely even vape, vaping uh, should not be used in the workplaces. However, as can be seen here, and this would be data uh, from the U.S., uh, unfortunately, despite uh, the laws, despite the regulations and policies limiting and even banning the usage of vaping, e-cigarettes, and definitely cigarettes uh, or tobacco products in the workplaces, uh, it is still rampant. It is still prevalent. Uh, it is estimated that uh, especially for vaping, roughly 75 or 76 percent of those who are users of the e-cigarettes and vape uh, would still uh, use them in their workplaces. Uh, so this can be uh, just occasional or rare na patakas, patagulang, but uh, there would be instances that uh, at times, uh, especially if there's no one else around, that uh, these uh, 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 recalcitrant uh, users of the vape products or e-cigarette products are using them. So yun yung issue na kahit na ipinagbabawal kahit as much as possible, hindi dapat ginagawa, but still, it is uh, being done and it is being used uh, occasionally. Even some malls, I see uh, people puffing and using their vape, ano, despite the fact na hindi nga dapat talaga siya pwede. Now, uh, what would be the uh, potential issues so in regards to vaping and smoking in public places? Uh, and in particular, indoor uh, places, one is that it can degrade indoor air quality. Uh, it also exposes bystanders to risks associated with secondhand uh, smoke exposure. And uh, as mentioned by Dr. Limpin earlier, uh, if you consider the concentrations of the harmful elements, uh, the uh, vapors, the mist, the smoke that is emitted by uh, vape products, it almost approximates the concentrations of the harmful substances which can be found in a regular cigarette. So again, hindi walang katotohanan na cleaner yung uh, uh, fumes, cleaner yung napapuff na uh, smoke coming from your e-cigarettes. And definitely, uh, it can also generate toxic particles indoors. So uh, Dr. Limpin had also mentioned it, this, that uh, there would be release of your uh, aldehydes, ano yung uh, yung formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, uh, etc., uh, can be released uh, from the e-cigarette vapors. Now, uh, this would be data coming from the Truth Initiative that looked at the impact of vaping uh, in the workplace and at work, and uh, that uh, there's more than 60% of uh, the office workers or the workers who uh, can see uh, can still see vape uh, vape uh, vapors or e-cigarette vapors around their workplace uh, but that majority so non-smokers and smokers alike actually accept and understand that uh, vaping in the workplace would be harmful to their health and that uh, especially the non-smokers they would say that the uh, uh, vaping bothers them and that uh, overall, uh, in the long run, especially, and this would be the main impact in the workplace, is that uh, vaping or those who vape 
and even those who do not vape uh, are affected. So their productivity, so kunyari sa, sa factories, sa industries, uh, even sa administrative work, for example, this can be affected uh, by people who smoke and who are exposed to smoke and that definitely more than 80% would say that the vapory workplaces would be important. So these are just examples of industries where there's concern regarding exposures to uh, vape and cigarettes. Ano? So you would see na matas and this would range from uh, educational uh, facilities to uh, financial activities, healthcare services, and even the transport and retail, where uh, most would be concerned that uh, the vaping use uh, affects them and uh, affects their productivity. So, uh, and as mentioned, the non-smokers actually are the ones bothered the most. Ano? So you can imagine na uh, ito mga hindi nag-vape and definitely hindi rin ito nagsisigarilyo. Ano? So they uh, get irritated, they get distracted, they can stop smoking kasi nga naaamoy nila na yung 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 scent yung fumes ano yung vapors and then definitely there's that concern for the health or for their health na yung second hand uh, vape exposure can also affect them and again this can affect their uh, productivity now one other issue is that a workplace uh, vaping actually can trigger other tobacco use so uh, typically yan, dahil alam natin addiction to, yung mga tobacco smokers na na-expose sa vape, na-enganyo sila, na trigger yung urge sa kanila na magsigaril yan. No? So that would translate to a higher uh, likelihood that they would be smoking and they would try to smoke. Uh, hindi siguro dun sa workplace itself but outside. Ano? So, trigger yung urge nila na magsigil. Yun. And uh, one other issue is that actually vaping in the workplace can undermine the efforts of those trying to quit. So, yung uh, pinipilit na nga nilang hindi magsigil yun, ayaw na nilang magsigil yun, tinatry na nilang iwasan yung uh, mga nagpapaalala sa kala ng uh, pagsisigarilyo and then malalanghap nila yung nicotine uh, uh, fumes, nicotine vapors kasama na yung flavoring and matitrigger na naman. So uh, there might be times na hindi nila makaya yung withdrawal and yung urge and pwedeng matrigger na bumalik sila sa pagsisigarilyo. So uh, definitely that would be another uh, harmful effect or impact of vaping in the workplace. And uh, one other issue that has come forth, so remember that we're still in the pandemic and it has been shown that smoking is a known risk factor for the progression of, of COVID-19. So uh, it has also been shown that vaping can increase the risk of testing uh, positive for COVID-19. Uh, alam natin na uh, vaping can lead to a valley. Uh, vaping can potentially have harmful effects on the lungs and that it can increase the risk of transmission of COVID-19 considering na usually hindi lang naman isa na nag-vape, congregate sila, no? nagsasama-sama sila, they can share their e-cigarette devices, they definitely would need to remove their face masks while smoking and that uh, uh, exhaling smoker vapor can contain respiratory droplets of uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which again can lead to a higher risk or potential for transmission. So yun yung kailangan alalahanin natin. And on the other hand, the uh, benefits of going uh, smoke-free, so alam natin to na uh, particularly for uh, 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 cigarette smoking or tobacco smoking, ano? so uh, ayo natin na madagdagan yung hospitalization, ayo natin na magkaroon sila ng tobacco-related illnesses, ayo natin na maging absent sila and reduce productivity because of illnesses uh, they get from the cigarettes. Ayon natin na tumanda ka agad sila, mas train sila, etc. So all of these uh, things uh, we would not want to happen to our workers. And I think that this would be the last slide. So some things that uh, the employers and the employees can do to prevent exposure 
not only to e-cigarettes and vape in the workplace, but also to your uh, cigarette smoking, that uh, uh, employers should establish a smoke-free indoor workplaces, including uh, workplaces free of e-cigarettes uh, that uh, would protect employees from involuntary secondhand exposures and that uh, employers should promote smoking cessation programs as part of their tobacco-free initiative or tobacco-free workplaces. Now, on the other hand, employees, when possible, should choose employment that promotes tobacco-free workplace and that uh, they themselves, kung hindi sila naninigarilyo, they should encourage uh, their co-workers who are either using e-cigarettes or uh, tobacco products to personally seek resources uh, for smoking cessation. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, a brief uh, discussion on uh, workplace and workplace-related uh, impact of e-cigarettes and smoking. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanchegel. So I think we, are, uh, we have completed already all our talks. And it's been a very exciting program. And uh, we've learned a lot, I'm sure, from all our speakers. Yes, so, thank you very much again. Thank you to Dr. Limpin, Dr. Gonzalez, and Dr. Sanchegel, as well as to all other speakers who graced us this morning. And of course, to Senator Pia Cayetano. And most especially to all the representatives and leaders of different medical societies who are with us this morning for this uh, beautiful campaign against the use of tobacco and vape. So for our closing remarks, yes, I'd like to call on our uh, uh, immediate past president and, of course, the vice president of the PCP and uh, representative of the OH and Ash. Ash. So I ever beautiful, Dr. Imelda Mateo for our closing remark. Yes. Thank you, Glina. So, sabi ko naman po sa inyo, marami ako hats being worn today but of course ilang isa lang naman po ang goal natin really is to curtail uh, tobacco cigarette e-cigarette vape smoke so ayan po yung ating tagline at yan paninindigan natin so as we close today's program in observance of the world no tobacco day where we conducted the health forum focusing on the harm and ill effects of tobacco and vape smoke across all age groups and presented our unified stand and position against the use of cigarette, e-cigarette, and vape, we seal our commitment and pledge to work together to ensure the safety and protection of the Filipinos. Today also ushers us to June with the month-long activities of PMA, PCP, PCCP, and DOH, and other allied organizations in celebration of the World No Tobacco Month. Let us strengthen our partnership and continue with the mission and endeavor to a healthier, smoke-free Philippines. Working hand in hand, we can. Maraming salamat po sa lahat. God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Imelda Mateo and Dr. Glina. We still have more to come for these coming months and this will not stop us from doing our campaign starting this May 31st to June, but this is a longer period campaign for all of us because Would we want to... Would you like to talk about the... Ano lang, kasi baka magulat yung mga tao when they see the blue and white yes. ribbons all over the so, place. Okay, so for now, as I just announced it also to our, our PCP group here in Negros Occidental, that they are already seeing blue and white ribbons on the main streets of the different cities and this is being done nationwide and all hospitals or most of our hospitals are already putting up their tarpaulins in support of the say no to back to tobacco vape and smoke uh say no to tobacco and they smoke and 
Uh, this is our kickoff for the campaign, the blue and white ribbons. Blue, I'll just give a little background of this. Blue is the color of the clear sky and air. It suggests steadfastness, serenity, and strength. While white is the color of the new beginning of wiping the slate clean. It is the blank canvas waiting to be written upon. The combination of blue and white speaks about the union of strength and new beginnings. Both are our essential armors as we begin to rewrite the stories of lives that are at stake due to the deadly effects of tobacco and smoking and now vaping. The first National No Smoking Day was held on Ash Wednesday, that is in 1984, and a campaign that was organized by doctors was against the use of smoking, and this has impacted a lot of lives. And this time, the Philippine College of Chess Physicians celebrates the blue and white. Starting last two weeks ago, the Blue and White Wednesdays in support of this advocacy, which is say no to tobacco and vape smoke. And aside from this, Doc Lina, we will be expecting activities, mosaic and local activities through our PCCCP, Philippine College of Chess Physicians local chapters with their own unified statement signing with their non-governmental organizations partners, as well as their LGUs. And we will be having a lot of series uh, we will be having series of talks and we will be going to different campuses to reach out to these students and educate them on the ill effects of vaping as well as smoking. So thank you, Dr. Rona. So it has been very exciting. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, it was quite a learning experience for everyone. And I hope we always choose health and we choose, of course, uh, to protect our youth. So and Dr. Lina. They should also watch out that we are going to release the official slogan for this campaign. And this is at par with the, the decades previous uh, the previous decade na campaign natin for smoking, which is the Yossi Kadiri. And we will be coming out for uh, more timely, especially against the use of vape. Okay, abangan. Abangan natin. Abangan. Abangan. So with that, uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Glina Cabrera. And this uh, is Dr. Ronel Sario. Thank you very much and have a fruitful day ahead. God bless everyone. God bless everyone. <laughs>